And hello everyone, thank you for attending today's presentation, how Cycle delivers personalised digital experiences for professional services. So just to give you a little bit of a um, background on the agenda today, so we're going to go through four key areas today. Um, number one, we're going to look at placing the platform into context, so a little bit of background about the Cycle platform, um, what it can do from a marketing perspective, and, and it will make more sense um, later on, you can see how the elements fit in. Then we'll be focusing on uh, knowing who is on your website and what they're doing. Um, how can we begin to drive positive actions um, using some of the marketing techniques and some of the marketing functionality within the platform. And then on to, on to the final element, uh, which is like a perennial bugbear, not just for professional services, but B2B in general. How can we begin to prove some of the value that digital provides to the business to, to sometimes a skeptical, um, skeptical sales department? So, a little about who uh, Ratio is and who I am. My name is Mario Kiriaku. I'm a managing partner and one of the founders here at Ratio. We're a uh, UK digital agency. We're a site called Partner. And we set up the, the agency really to work with um, Cycle clients to get the most out of the platform from both a technical pers perspective to make sure it's been built correctly, but also from a marketing perspective. Um, how can we begin to optimize experiences online using techniques such as uh, uh, A-B testing, multivariate testing, on-site personalization, um, closing the loop between web and email using things like marketing automation. So without further ado, I'm going to go straight into the presentation for today. Um, just to let you know, we are going to have Q&A at the end of today's presentation. If you would like to um, ask a question, please input your question using the toolbar on the right-hand side of your screen. So a little bit of context. Now, having a look at see who's um, signed up for today's presentation, I can see some of you are online. I can see majority of people here are Sitecore users. So you have Sitecore um, as a platform baked into your website. So you, you may be familiar with some of the functionality, you, you may be not. But just to give you a bit of background, um, just running through four key areas of uh, well, five key areas of the site called layer model. So from a base layer, looking from the bottom, looking up, uh, the integration um, standpoint. Now, traditionally, Sitecore is seen as a CMS system. One of the reasons why it's um, so popular uh, and a lot of organizations use it, especially enterprise level organizations, is its ability to integrate into other systems. Now, from a professional services perspective, when we talk to um, our clients, the one system they're looking to um, integrate with traditionally is CRM systems, whether a proprietary system like a Salesforce or a Dynamics or an in-house um, system. So it has the ability to integrate um, with your third-party systems. The data layer. Now, when we think of um, Sitecore, we can think of it as a content management system, but the way to look at it from a marketing point of view, from a, how, how do we actually deliver a better on-site experiences from the data angle? So from site call eight onward, um, uh, with the introduction of uh, XDB uh, and the X profile, which we'll run through a little bit later on in the presentation, site call is capturing a lot of data, a lot of structured data um, around how individuals are interacting with your site, the type of campaigns they're um, engaging with, the channels, um, the touch points, what content they're consuming. Uh, we also have the ability to integrate this with different systems such as uh, GA so we can spill out reports and do a lot of BI based on um, um, aggregated data from the site and also um, your other tools. Now Cycle calls this bit the processing bit. Well, I like to think of it as this is the actionable. This is the tools that you as a marketer can then leverage and go out to drive you know, positive actions. So yes, it has um, analytics, um, marketing automation, um, testing, um, the ability to do multivariate testing, A-B testing. We're not going to touch upon that today, but it, it is baked into the platform um, and um, personalization as well. Of course, at its core, Sitecore um, is traditionally, um, that's where it, uh, when it started 15 years ago, it was a content management system. So from a management perspective, from a content editor's point of view, uh, it enables you to manage your on-site content, make changes, manage all your digital assets, etc. And one of the things we're going to be talking about is around, if we're driving um, positive actions, uh, how can Sitecore enable you to drive positive actions via uh, an omni-channel, multi-channel world? So the ability to personalize the experience 
uh, for different users based on the channels they're coming in from, whether it's web or um, email or mobile, and look to run tests in order to determine um, how do we iterate and improve the experience over time. So knowing who your visitors are and how they're uh, interacting with your site is one of the questions we get asked quite, quite often um, by, by our own customers. Um, they have um, access to um, Google Analytics. They can um, determine um, how many visits they're having, the dwell time, um, all the usual um, metrics that um, if you're looking at it from a web analyst point of view, you have access to. But we always get asked, we know all this about how people are interacting with stuff, but we actually don't know who our visitors are um, and from a professional services perspective it's quite important because um, there is it's not a transactional site in the traditional e-commerce sense so they want to know who they are so they can align them with their sales strategies um, and also how can they better target their base on uh, individuals but also for the organizations they, they, they belong to so some of the common objectives um, that we come across that from uh, professional service organization, whether you're a law firm or you're in consulting, etc., cetera, um, that you're looking to um, optimize and deliver for your visitors when they come to the site. So the obvious one is how do we better sell our organization? That goes without saying, but how can we use um, on-site um, personalization or on-site optimization to prove the credibility of our organization? Um, how can we highlight products and service strengths? Now, um, if you have um, a large um, volume of services or from a law, legal point of view where um, a couple of the law firms we work with, you might have hundreds of um, uh, lawyers. Each lawyer is an individual fee earner. Each one is looking to get, uh, promote themselves on the site to raise their own individual credibility because ultimately it impacts them as an individual. But how do we understand from the business point of view what information do they want? What are they looking for? And how do we align that with the best service or the best individual uh, in the company? Ultimately, it's about how do we discover the right information? So for, from a site call perspective, from a site call objective, if you're looking at your own site, how can we look to optimize it uh, using the platform? Is How do we better get it, get to get in your website ready to track, understand, analyze this is from unknown to known? Now, this is something we, we stress quite quite often. So the majority of visitors are unknown in the sense that we don't know who they are, we can't um, um, attach them to uh, a known individual. And the majority of your visitors to your site on a monthly basis will always remain unknown. Now, for us, is looking at it from um, almost like a marketing funnel. How many, um, how do we uh, nurture the unknown visitors? Um, uh, and then how do we transfer them to known? And known could be taking an actionable, uh, um, uh, activities such as filling in a form so we now know who they are but we're going to be talking about this during the presentation about how we can understand who unknown is and actually to say we have a, quite a lot of information around an unknown visitor from the footprint they leave behind uh, the campaigns they're interacted with and we're going to run through a little bit later on right through to how do we treat um, known and push them into uh, different marketing avenues such as using marketing automation to better nurture them So site call action. So if you're looking at your own site, um, what are the things you can look to do? Well, setting up XDB, um, looking at your site, um, you see the terms component base. If you're on site call eight uh, version uh, and later, we're going to be talking about it throughout the presentation. Um, you will a you'll be capturing um, more information around your prospects uh, using something like the Mongo um, database. If you're on earlier versions of site call and you're looking to build a business case. Um, for upgrading, um, having access to XDB um, from a marketing point of view, the data you collect actually is quite a, a good a way of um, um, putting together a business case. And in fact, we're doing a presentation later in the month where we, we go into that in a bit more detail. Looking at your website to determine if it's component-based. And by component-based, I mean, if you look at, for example, your homepage, have the, has the site been built as individual components? Do you have the ability as a marketer or a content editor to switch out um, hero banners for different banners? Um, that's important if you're looking to run things like A-B testing or create personalized scenarios where you deliver a different um, banner based on 
the information you have about a customer in real time. Uh, site call actions such as creating personas, if as an organization you've already done a lot of um, uh, uh, customer research, persona strategy to define who your customers are, we can look to build those personas within to Sitecore, um, tag content that's relevant to specific persona groups. So you can begin to build profiles up over time of um, which personas are interacting with, with which content. Now, we look at this as a foundational layer. Um, these are the perhaps the uncool elements that you need to put in place first uh, in order to reap the benefits further down the line, which is taking advantage of the marketing outcomes. So you put in this work to create the foundation so afterwards you can, we can have more accurate targeting um, so we can deliver a differentiated experience to um, different customers, different persona groups, different customer segments. Uh, we can begin to introduce lead scoring and we're going to talk about that later on in how do we prove value to sales. Um, and obviously we begin to collect more structured data and by structured I mean collecting data in a, in a format that allows marketing to extract actionable insights, you know, defining perhaps the four or five key areas uh, or key elements you want to collect data on because that's the areas that allow you to optimize and report back to the business. So talking about the data foundation, I mentioned um, XDB and within Sitecore 8 uh, uh, and later, they visualize that data as something called the experience profile. Now, if you are a um, uh, uh, user of a, a CRM system, you'd be familiar with contact cards, uh, account cards. You know, within a CRM system, a contact card, you can you can populate it with information that's pertinent and relevant to that individual and that business or that that account that your company is working on. You know, email address, anything that's relevant to your organisation. From a web perspective, within Sitecore, it's relatively similar. Um, but from a marketer's point of view, it allows them to collect data which is pertinent to um, a, a marketer. So from an individual's point, um, what, uh, how many website visits, what campaigns they are interacted with, what campaigns drove them, what channels, what referral channels, what profile do they match. Um, now when I talk about unknown visitors earlier on, um, Unlike a CRM card um, where you know who the individual is, you know, you have an email address, for example, and a first name and a last name, within Sitecore, initially, these remain unknown. But it's still valuable because if you look at it from a um, traditional marketing funnel, um, we're collecting data on all these unknown vistas, which allow us to understand them better. But then we could use that information to better to deliver a better on-site uh, optimized experience with the end point of converting them into a known um, visitor. And at that point, we can then pre-populate the card with who they are now as an individual. From a marketing point of view, that just gives us access to richer information because once they become a known individual, um, we can pass that information off to a um, CRM system. Um, again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, um, but also to a marketing automation system, either using the um, the version that's baked into Sitecore, uh, they call it EXM, or using your own third party tool to begin nurturing them now off-site. So transferring that visitor from the on-site experience to the off-site. The reason I talk about um, the previous stages as the foundational layer, because you can have a, um, you might have a tendency or a desire to just dive into the platform and start dry, trying to drive positive actions. You know, start playing around with personalization um, experiences and journeys, um, perhaps creating a few custom um, uh, automation um, um, scenarios, which is all fine, all well and good. But um, from our experience of working with um, quite a few cycle customers, putting in that initial uh, spending, you know, uh, a month or so, putting together all the research, all the information, tagging all the content, creating all your personas, laying that foundation, just allows you to reap the benefits further along, which is initially in how do we drive positive actions. So a question for you. Is your web content designed around your customers' motivations? And why does that matter? Well, it's technically not necessarily a um, um, 
platform issue or if you're looking to get the most out of the platform you know the content is something separate that you know a separate team could be managing that from the digital team but it matters really because we're collecting information on customers in order to try and understand their individual motivational goals to try and understand what it is they're trying to find out um, what what content do they want um, to help them better do their, their roles because we want to optimize the website based on visitors needs and what, what do I mean by that well I'm going to give you an example of um, a um, something we worked with with, with a, a law firm um, uh, quite recently I can't say who it is we're under NDA but one of their um, uh, I mean they had multiple customer segments but one of the key customer segments they wanted to target was um, in-house legal counsel so in-house legal teams working for end clients they, they as a law firm wanted to target and engage with um, and they want to understand how could we use the platform to better do that now it's a combination of setting up the sort of foundational layer of uh, the cycle platform uh, as well as the how do we create a positive action for this specific um, custom segment but the reason why I asked before is your content um, created around the customer motivation or goals or objectives or challenges is because as a business the majority of businesses have a tendency to think about what they sell as being the most important element in um, a client's life or you know, what we do what we sell is is should be at the forefront of everything we do and I get it it makes sense uh, but ultimately the business is in business to generate um, revenue if it doesn't it doesn't exist but from the client's point of view not necessarily their um, number one goal. As individuals, they have their own challenges. They're more interested, quite rightly, in their own challenges. They have their own internal stakeholders. So, for example, in uh, this example, um, the items in blue are looking at um, the in-house legal team, their, their challenges around what they were trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis, their, their goals, who they're trying to manage from, um, uh, better staff training, advising HR on um, contract law, um, trying to reduce costs, trying to understand the business strategy so they could translate that into what they do so they could better serve their internal customers. We're trying to understand what is it they, they actually uh, were interested in, what would they would do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then the items in the um, slightly pinkish, reddish color are the external elements outside of their business which directly affects um, their, their role. Um, unsurprisingly for um, a legal team, elements such as Brexit came up, uh, uh, currency fluctuations, because all of these um, might potentially have an impact on what they do uh, in terms of um, um, uh, the legal side of their business from the type of um, contracts they put together in terms of um, export, so is that being affected by um, currency fluctuations? How do you future-proof for, for Brexit? Uh, why it was important for the law firm we was working with was was to understand all these different areas of content that they were interested in and what could we put together as a content strategy so we could deliver and optimize that experience based around their individual challenges now from from a business perspective why why was that important well if you're talking about driving positive actions and we're going to be talking about personalization and marketing automation in a second we needed to be as relevant as humanly possible. So if we're looking to switch out, for example, a component on a home page to deliver a specific hero banner based on a um, set of keywords that drove someone to that page, um, what exactly relevant, is relevant to that individual? If their um, challenges are around Brexit, how can we use Brexit, align that with, uh, in this case, this law firm's core expertise around these different areas around um, uh, the services they're provided to in-house legal teams to elevate their their brand so if they're looking to differentiate themselves from their competition one of the ways they wanted to do it was by better understanding their customers than the competition and better serving them online so i talked about driving positive actions and there's there's obviously lots of different tactics you can use but i'll be focusing um, specifically on two uh, marketing automation and personalization so 
if you're using the Cycle platform, how can you be potentially look to uh, leverage personalization? So imagine the screenshot on, on the screen in front of you is your own homepage. Your, as, as a digital marketer, uh, throughout the month, you'll be doing your usual traffic acquisition strategies to drive traffic to your site or to your landing pages or your campaigns, microsites, etc. Uh, search, email campaigns, social, paid for campaigns. Each of those are driving traffic to your site. Now, initially, these are unknown visitors, but each uh, visit um, is leaving behind a digital footprint. It's leaving behind a wealth of data that allows us to understand the context of this initial visit. So, for example, if um, you spend uh, heavily on paid for campaigns, for example, on Google for PPC, um, we will have a bunch of information that's coming across um, based on traditional analytics, based on, for example, where they're located in the country, as well as um, which keywords are driving an individual um, to your page. Um, because that allows us to then deliver an experience based around the specific keywords. So if you use three or four different keywords for uh, Google PPC, each one could entail a slightly different on-site messaging to increase conversions. Um, so just to say really that unknown visitors um, provide a hell of a lot of value uh, and we can mine that quite well. And all the data we collect in um, from these visitors, we begin that we're populating that experience profile. So that, that um, site call CRM type experience is populating it. So we begin to create personalized rules, personalized scenarios, funnels, etc based on this information we have about contacts. And marketing automation. Within the Cycle platform, um, you may be familiar, you may not be familiar, familiar with it. Cycle has its own email tool um, called uh, EXM, Email Experience Manager. Um, it's one of the we always feel is like one of the most like those underused elements. Perhaps it's um, perhaps um, email lacks the I suppose the uh, newness and coolness that uh, on-site personalization has. But actually, from a professional services perspective, as well as you know generally B two B, email um, has the potential to drive enormous value um, for your known visitor. So in effect, um, your more high valued. Um, um, database segment because you've captured information about them uh, and also they could be existing customers. Now within the um, um, Cycles at OM EXM, um, if you're familiar with the layout of marketing automation tools, um, you have the drag and drop ability to create rich nurture plans uh, which will fire off triggered emails um, based on customer action points. But when we talked about setting up the data foundation layer um, earlier on in the presentation, the reason why you begin to reap the benefits now is because by putting in that initial work, we can begin to create quite rich nurture journeys based on how people are interacting with your site. So you have the traditional triggered email, someone fills a form, you, know, you receive an email. That's, that's great. And that, 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 that you should still look to do that. But we can begin to put together rich nurture plans based around um, the type of content people are viewing. So if they're a known visitor and they're looking at a specific service, can we fire off a specific email uh, related to that service? Or if a customer has lapsed and comes back after six months and spends 20 minutes doing in-depth research, can we trigger off um, a message to the um, um, automation system to then put them into a specific nurture plan so we can bring them back or notify the sales team? You may be looking. You may be using a third-party tool like Eloqua or Dot Mailer. Um, it requires a little bit of um, uh, technical work and integration, but you could look to uh, integrate the Cycle platform into, for example, Eloqua. So we could then pass off this information to to Eloqua, so we could begin to um, uh, still maintain the same experience and pull that data back into the X profile. So you don't necessarily have to give up your tools. We, we know cus um, customers have invested a, a, a lot into various different tools, but there's always a way of trying to combine the two. We get asked quite often about, you know, 
are there any early stage opportunities anything that we could just you know just dive into and whilst we always recommend um, taking that structured approach to strategy to try and um, have a more of a structured approach to delivering this type of experience there are obviously a, a couple of ones which um, from our experience come up quite often and obviously it depends on um, what you as a business do or sell and I can see on the call today we've got people from quite different um, verticals but some of the obvious ones um, geo-targeting so can we deliver a hyper-targeted uh, on-site experience based on um, your location um, uh, assets downloaded if someone has downloaded an asset not only are they a known visitor so therefore we have richer information about them but we can then you we can then you we can then use that to optimize the on-site experience based on the contents they've consumed. Um, matching profiles, so if they match a specific um, persona group, um, can we push them off into a, a certain bucket for a list for the automation plans or optimize the on-site experience? Um, one that comes up quite often actually in professional services is uh, account targeting. So if you're um, uh, business development team have a uh, defined sole strategy about targeting uh, specific known accounts. Um, we can look to leverage um, that information to create a on-site experience that optimizes for known accounts based on their IP addresses, and that's one we we come up always quite quite often. Um, and campaigns triggered. So if you're spending money on uh, pay for campaigns. Um, can we optimize the initial on-site experience in order to increase conversions or run tests to, to increase the conversion rate of your paid-for campaigns? So in effect, maintain the same spend but try and get more bang for your buck by increasing the number of registrations or downloads, etc. Proving the value of the sales. Um, Something that marketing or and digital uh, always gets asked. Something we always get asked. You know, um, you know, the, the rest of the business doesn't necessarily feel that um, um, digital is driving value. It's felt as more of a PR slash you know comms tool. Um, we believe it, it provides value, and so so do we. So, what what can we do within the cycle platform to begin to um, show value to the business? So, there's a couple of areas. I mentioned um, lead scoring earlier, um, and one of the reasons why we say um, you could dive in, but actually there's a lot of value to be said for putting in that initial uh, structured approach to laying the foundation. Foundation that later on is is uh, lead scoring. So from um, if you've ever heard um, um, your marketing director talk to your sales director, and the marketing directors always say we deliver you know a thousand leads a month, and sales always say actually. That's not the case. Only 10% of those are actual real leads that we define are actual leads. Um, lead scoring within Cycle actually is a way of um, delivering more qualified or graded leads to Cycle. So within Cycle, there's a, a, a they have a, something called the engagement score, and really that's the ability to assign a numerical value to digital touch points. So the way we normally work with it with our clients is it's, it's via a workshop where we look to understand um, what are your main um, digital goals that drive value to you uh, as a business. And that could be a contact us page, it could be downloading specific articles, uh, white papers, viewing videos, etc. And within the system, uh, going into your content tree in the back end and creating those goals and assigning them to those specific items and pages. Um, so when a Vista comes to your website, um, they'll begin to accrue points. And the reason why this is valuable is because we can then, after that, say, um, hypothetical thousand leads you generate a month, uh, we can begin to grade them into, at its most simplistic, uh, hot, medium, cold. I mean, there's, there's ways to slice and dice this. Um, but in effect, we could then pri prioritize those leads for sales to say, uh, the top 10% are the most valuable based on their interaction with um, us as a brand. Um, we could even create specific reports around how those individuals have interacted, what services, what um, uh, pages they've looked at, what content they've downloaded. You could pull that into a CRM system or even as something as simple as um, creating a, 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 an email that spits out to a specific individual in your business. Talking about integrating with third-party tools, um, one of the um, 
a lot of the reasons why there's always a disconnect between marketing and um, sales in in legal consulting b2b etc is uh, the use of different tools marketing use a set of tools and sales will use something else um, predominantly um, around CRM systems. Uh, the example on the screen is Microsoft Dynamics, but Salesforce, um, uh, Sugar CRM, doesn't really matter. Um, but if your sales team are using a um, CRM system to manage their own pipeline, sales, customer interactions, um, how do we integrate the two? So for example, we talked about earlier on about the EX profile, capturing that rich information on how customers are interacting with you as a brand, um, and that point where they go from unknown to known, we can uh, do uh, one-way and two-way integration um, with CRM systems. So one-way integration is pulling that data into your CRM system so we can begin to populate your CRM contact cards with that sort of rich uh, web data of how individuals are engaging with you, what content they're consuming, what score have they achieved. We can also look to do two-way um, connection. So we can begin to pull data from um, your CRM system uh, into your Sitecorp um, powered website. So for example, we could potentially look to do on-site personalization based on information held within uh, a contact card. For example, say your salesperson uh, updates a contact card with something relevant to um, that individual, uh, and we could populate the homepage or, or part of your site based on that, or um, use that information to create um, automation plans. I mean, this is, um, um, depending on your system, for example, uh, we can slice and dice this and pull in different data into your CRM contact cards. Um, but it just gives you an example, a flavor of, if you're not doing it, what you could potentially do. And a lot of this is, 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 is potential because everything is different based on um, individual customers because you'll be using different systems. So there's no uh, one size fits all, but you have the potential of, uh, putting this data to better align marketing and um, sales. One of the things we get asked quite often is around um, creating custom reports. Um, so this is for both, for example, you maybe your marketing director wants to see the value of what his digital team is doing, but also um, um, the business development teams for your organization. So what we can look to do is, is to create um, something as simple as um, an Excel sheet that pulls in data on an automatic refresh from Sitecore um, based on what information you want as a, uh, as a business to report on. So for one of our clients, one of the things they were interested in was on uh, reporting on the top 50 uh, financial organizations globally uh, because they have a um, uh, vertical approach to sales and also a known uh, named account approach. So what they wanted the show to sales um, and use it in the sales process is how those top 50 accounts are interacting with um, their site and their content, etc. And again, um, quite simple, uh, relatively inexpensive, and something you could turn around relatively quick and start showing the value to um, internal stakeholders. That, that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Um, I did say initially it was going to be 30 minutes, so we'd like to keep it short and sweet and to the point to appreciate everyone's busy. So we're just going to go into um, answer a few questions. If you do have any burning questions, uh, feel free to input them on the uh, toolbar on the right-hand side of your screen. So I'm just going to take a quick look to see what we have come through. Okay, uh, first question. Uh, we have um, thousands of content items, you know, hundreds of different pages. Um, is there a way to personalize the experience across all these different pages? There is. Um, there's different ways of doing this. Um, you could do things like um, personalization based on taxonomy. So on your website structure within your content tree, we can create personalized rules that uh, will deliver a personalized experience based on uh, the sort of parent page and all its sub pages is one way to automate it. Uh, another way um, we've done and worked with our developers is we can create automated scripts where we can auto tag 
pages that are relevant to specific uh, personas or profiles so we can begin to um, uh, begin to personalize at scale okay and are there any email automation quick wins um, yes um, one of the things um, I normally say to clients is to focus on your most valuable segments initially um, because they're, most, um, you, they're more measurable, we can drive uh, quicker value. Um, so one of the things that we come up quite often is to focus on existing customers. So if you're looking to um, move beyond, say, just doing the triggered emails based on someone filling in the form, is to look at your existing customers because you already have uh, we have a database of information around there and look to create, um, start small, create um, nurture journeys which target them, look to see how we can um, segment them into different groups um, and then we can begin to scale up and even look to do something more complex over time where we look to close the loop between uh, email automation and on-site experience. So for example, we can create those automated journeys and if we are pushing them to a landing page, let's simultaneously create personalized scenarios for those different journeys so when they hit them, those landing pages or microsites etc they're delivering um, slightly different images or different um, uh, messaging or even different CTAs okay um, I'm conscious of time um, so I'm going to um, bring today to a close um, if I haven't had a chance to answer your questions, I'm going to um, take a look at your questions um, as soon as the presentation's over, and I will uh, get back to you either later today or early tomorrow morning with a, a, a detailed answer as possible. Just to let you know, I have recorded um, today's presentation, so I will be sharing it with everyone on the call today. Uh, if you also want a copy of um, the presentation slides, that is also not a problem. I can send that out as well. Um, just leaves me to say thank you very much for attending today uh, and I hope you enjoyed um, the content and have a nice uh, rest of the day.